Okay, integrated science students, third video I've recorded today. Not for you guys, I did a couple for physical science, atomic structure. Do you remember that? You were in ninth grade in a, an actual desk. I got to talk to you like face to face. Good times. Anyway, we're just gonna whip through this. We're gonna talk about types of volcanoes. Uh, we've only, we've pretty much just concentrated on three, cinder cone, um, composite or strato, and shield. But there's other types of volcanic landforms, I guess. So let's just go through this. Let me share my screen. We'll pull up our notes again. Really getting tired of looking at my face on Zoom. All right. <clears throat> Types of volcanoes. Hopefully in your research um, that you guys are doing. And you guys, you know I'm gonna type in intermittent or just random sentences from your paper. And if that exact sentence comes up on something online, I am not going to be happy. This needs to be your work. You know that. Types of volcanoes. Let's talk about cinder cones. Cinder cones are typically the simplest type. They're, they really only come from one type of eruption. Um, they're built from particles and blobs of congealed lava. Um, they're, for the most part, they are ejected from a single vent. That means that whatever pressure is built up inside can only come out a very small opening. And so it's going to end up being very, very explosive. Just like if you had two jars, you had the wide mouth mason jar, and then you had a narrow um, jar like the glass, um, the glass pop bottles. They even still make glass pop bottles. Anyway. Um, and they have the same amount of carbonated water in them. And you shake them up, and then you open the tops, like, immediately, so no, none of the pressure seeps out. You, you just take them off, like if they were corked or something, you can pull them out right away. The smaller opening is going to have a much higher explosion than the larger opening, just like if you have two different hoses. and um, one is that big around and one is that big around and you have the same amount of water coming through them. You're holding them both like this. The one with the smaller opening, the water is going to shoot out farther. Same thing with a volcano. Um, we have gas charged lava being blown violently into the air. Gas charged means that there's a lot of gas trapped in it. What type of lava tends to trap gas? Viscous lava. Okay. These are going to be the um, very viscous, very thick types of lava. Um, they're not overly big, typically. They tend to be on the smaller size. The average height is 400 meters. For you Marcans that don't understand the metric system, it's 325 to about 1300 feet. Um, I'm trying to think of something that's Long is a football field? 100 yards, 300 feet. So one to three football fields high. Um, example, craters of the moon. I'm hoping you guys have all been there. It's in our own freaking state. And then Paricotin. I said that pretty well, didn't I? Paricotin. There should be a, an accent on this little eye right here. Um, that's the one that grew up out of the cornfield in Mexico, and they pretty much witnessed its entire growth or its entire formation from beginning to end over the course of a few days. Um, here's just your drawing of a cinder cone. Again, cinder type of pyroclastic material. Pyroclastic material always comes from explosive eruptions. The blobs of lava, there might be a blob come out right after, you know, a really big explosion and a little blob, but for the most part, it's all pyroclastic material. Um, this is an over an aerial view of one. 
I don't know where it's at. I found it and I don't know where that one's at. All right, let's go on to the next one. Composite volcanoes, also called stratovolcanoes. These are the layered ones. They are the combination of both explosive and inexplosive eruptions. They're typically steep sided and symmetrical cones. Um, they are alternating layers of lava and pyroclastic flow. When the initial pressure is relieved through that explosive eruption that gives us all the um, pyroclastic material, then the lava can flow and it flows until the pressure is relieved enough that it stops flowing. And then the vent or the throat is gonna be clogged up and then that's gonna hold in more pressure. And then the next time it blows, it's gonna be explosive. I've described this. Um, they come from a single vent often called a crater because after we've had so many explosions, the vent um, is widened because as it explodes out, sometimes it shatters some of that existing rock, turning that into pyroclastic material, and we get a little bit wider opening. Um, but it can have multiple vents, okay? It's, it's not like a fissure, it doesn't come out of a fissure, a big long crack but you can have multiple vents, those parasitic cones. Um, you can have a couple different vents at the top of the mountain. It just kind of, you know, that pressurized magma is going to find the weakest point. And if there's a couple different weak points on its way up to the main vent, it'll, it'll come out of that vent as well. Um, they're several miles wide and 10,000 feet or more high. So these are bigger than the, um, cinder cone volcanoes. And um, these are typically the ones you find, you're gonna find these on a calendar. They're symmetrical, they're pretty, they have the snow on top. They're just your typical beautiful mountain volcano until they, you know, blow your face off. Um, examples, Fuji, Cotopaxi, Mount Hood, and many of our grand mountains. Most of the ones on our research were strato or composite volcanoes. Um, there are also some subcategories of this that we're going to get into in a minute. Um, here's just a, a kind of a picture of one blowing up. I thought it was cool. I thought it was pretty. Um, this cloud would indicate it's during an explosive eruption. I'm sure you've all seen this before. I like the one I drew. And then this one, just in case I'm going too fast for you, moving too quickly, this is a picture of a volcano and we've got the word here and then we went ahead and pointed to it so you'd know that it's a volcano so trying to keep everybody up to speed volcano all right shield volcano actually literally named after sideways it's really low well, not low it can be giant but it's wider than it is tall and so it kind of looks like a warrior's shield if you could pick up the mountain and hold it just like a warrior's shield um there's a picture i don't know why i did that first it's from non-viscous lava because if it's wider than it is tall that means it's going to run out and run a really long ways because it's going to run quickly before it hardens it's repeated non-explosive eruptions. We don't have explosive eruptions. If they are, they're very, very um, mild and, and short-lived. It's not um, overly viscous. It's not gonna trap a lot of gases. It's not going to um, plug up the vents. And so there's, there's just not gonna be the necessary ingredients for an explosive eruption. Um, they, they will come from a central vent. Typically not a lot of extra vents on this one. Typically not more than one vent, like in the composite. They're broad and gently sloping like a warrior's shield. It can be hundreds of miles long, wide, and tens of thousands of feet tall. They're the biggest of the volcanoes. In sheer, sheer bulk, they're the biggest. The um, composite ones look taller because they're not as broad, but these things are massive. And I'm gonna show you um, a little picture at the end that kind of puts them into perspective for you. Um, Hawaii are all shield volcanoes and the Galapagos Islands are shield volcanoes as well. There's a shield volcano. And here's one in the process of being made with the river of lava. All right, sorry, there's no, um, diagram, I mean, no labels like an arrow volcano, but it's, you know. 
lava domes. They these are typically they look a little bit like a cinder cone, but you're not going to have your pyroclastic material. They're made from very they're very very viscous, and they they're not going to flow um, any great distance. They're just bulbous masses of lava. Um, this the lava can't go very far, but it's not being expelled violently, so it just kind of bubbles around the vent. A lot of times you're going to see these within um, another volcano, maybe the crater of another volcano. Um, grows from within, outer surface cools, and then shatters, spilling loose fragments. So there are going to be some loose fragments, but not because they're blown into the air like pyroclastic material. This bulbous mass comes out, the outer is going to uh, solidify, and then as this bulb keeps pushing, it, it um, shatters and we get some, some little tricklings of some um, broken pieces of rock. Um, it often, like I said, it often occurs within the crater or the flanks of larger volcanoes. Um, Okatina, Okatina, I don't know how to say that, in New Zealand. Um, is one of these. You can see down here we've got this pretty big crater and then this in the middle it would be considered a lava dome in the middle. This is a lava dome. Um, I don't know if this one is within a crater. If this one's in within something it would be in the caldera being that big. And then this beautiful drawing right here. I hope that clears things up for you. Other volcanic landforms. Let's just get this done. Okay, let's just get it done. We're not gonna have any more videos. You guys have finals to take, right? Um, crater, we've kind of already talked about how craters are formed. It's a funnel-shaped pit around the central vent of a volcano. A lot of times you're gonna see craters on your composite volcanoes. Lava and pyroclastic material can pile up around the vent. When the eruption stops, lava can drain back down under creating or leaving a crater. That's one way a crater can be made. So it, as, as the lava is coming out, it kind of pushes the existing rock aside or maybe even shatters the existing rock. And then it just ever so slightly drains back down after the pressure is relieved. Um, that's how craters are formed. A caldera is a, is a different thing. Calderas are huge. Car calderas can be miles across. It's, Similar to a crater, um, but much, much, much bigger. Um, it forms when the magma chamber underneath, remember our drawings that we did, we have the big magma, magma chamber, it completely empties. When it empties, we have this, this big balloon underneath. And if the, it can't support the weight of the mountain above it, it collapses and um, creates this huge, sunken place. Uh, Yellowstone is three different calderas. So that's a massive, massive amount um, of lava that was underground. That fell. Um, crater Lake is another one of these. Crater Lake is a huge caldera. They say it's Crater Lake, but it should be Caldera Lake. And then Wizard Island in the middle is a cinder cone volcano that came up after the caldera was formed. Um, this little drawing here kind of shows you as the magma chamber is emptied, all of this, this empty spot, which used to be filled up with, with magma, but now that magma is out here somewhere as pyroclastic material or volcanic um, or lava flow, um, then this just collapses. And here's a picture of Crater Lake. And here's another um, caldera that a lot of times they fill up with water. Here is a, an example of the steps of creating a caldera. Notice the multiple vents we've got going on here. And the magma chamber was able to be completely emptied and then over time it will collapse. And this was, um, I don't know, I was trying to read that, can't read it. All right, lava plateau. We, as Idahoans, and me, as a Washingtonian, Southeastern Washingtonian, we should appreciate this because we live on one. Lava reaches the surface through long cracks called rifts or fissures. The rift is typically, we call it a rift under the ocean and a fissure on top. Um, 
massive, massive amounts of outpouring runny lava. Okay, this is going to be our mafic lava, the dark rocks. Um, the they have you know more iron and such in them, and they're not as much, um, not as much as, not as much silicone, so it's not viscous. Plus, this is a long, huge crack. Can be several cracks where the lava, um, where the magma reaches the surface. Um, Columbia River Plateau, which is I grew up on the very eastern point of that, not the very eastern point, the Columbia River Plateau kind of comes a little bit into Idaho as well, but the Washington part of it, I grew up on the eastern place, um, portion of that. Some areas are over three kilometers thick. That's um, a lot of lava, not even, not a lot of so much laterally, horizontally, but vertically as well. And, um, to show you just the sheer thickness of this. Here is the Idaho Plateau, um, Snake River Plateau is what they call it, but this is also called, I mentioned this before, the Idaho Smile. This, once it's been weathered into soil, is very, very good soil for growing crops, potatoes especially, uh, that sandy loam. And then the one in the Columbia River, it's a little bit bigger, um, but I grew up right there, right below the A in Columbia. Um, we are right on the edge of the really good farm ground. We got about 30 bushel wheat. That's not that good. Anyway, um, and that's it, folks. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Somo, Soma volcano, excuse me. Um, so what happens here is a summit caldera. So we've got a caldera that resulted from a um, magma chamber being emptied and the mountain kind of collapsing, the center of the collapsing. And then um, the magma chamber or another magma chamber is created, but lava starts building up pressure again. And then within that caldera, we get another volcano being made. Um, it's actually named after a very famous mountain, Mount Soma in Italy. Mount Vesuvius is a composite volcano that grew inside of Mount Soma's caldera. And somebody's gonna do Mount Vesuvius. I can't remember who asked for Mount Vesuvius for their research. Um, example, Mount Vesuvius. So this here, this wall, that's the Soma volcano. Um, that's the, the Soma volcano. This is, the, this is not an example. This is not Mount Vesuvius. Um, but this, was, this is a caldera. Then within the caldera, we have another central vent. And this kind of shows you how it works. We get the collapsing caldera and then a subsequent second volcano is created. All right. I'm going to leave this up for just a little while, or you can pause it. I'm not going to leave it up forever, but it gives you an idea of the relative sizes of these, um, how much larger the shield volcano is. Now, I also want to show you this little video. This is my favorite video of all times. So I'm going to tell you what HNTDAV means after you watch this. Please watch it. It brings me joy. I'm sure you guys want to bring me joy, right? Dink, dink, dink. This little girl is awesome. Thank you. 
laugh so much. I'm a terrible person. That's what it is. I'm a terrible person. That's why I laugh. But um, <laughs> at the end, she yells, oh, my eyes, it burns. Anyway, this stands for how not to do a volcano. Guys, that's the end. That's the, that's the last of our videos. You don't have to look at my face ever again, ever again. And I don't have to look at your faces ever again. So there's that. But I will see you guys on the other side next year. I'll see you. You can stop and say hi. Bye.